This awesome bit of kit is the Coolmaster Neptune 240M. Stick around to find out more. This 240ml based uh, liquid cooler, um, this uh, is an all-in-one design. Now you can fill it up, there is a fill port if you really wanted to, but it would void your warranty. Now inside the box you'll get a very very good instruction guide on how to install it, the cooler itself, all the mounting hardware you need to mount two fans, two fans, and we also actually got two um, Silencio FP120mm fans to go with this, although we didn't actually have the mounting hardware to install those two fans on, so that will be an extra video to see the de temperature difference. Now this uh, uh, basically liquid cooler is an all-in-one design which means you never have to actually fill it up. It has some anti-kink tubing and is 27mm thick. It's 240mm, uh, for, it basically fits two, two 120mm fans on either side and has a relatively decent fin density for the fans provided. Now the pump uh, pump block, um, sorry, pump combo unit, so the, the actual pump and the uh, CPU block, is a very nice design in my opinion, very well rounded, and is incredibly easy to install. You can see in the video that will pop up in a second that you can install it literally within about 5 minutes, which is fantastic for any CPU cooler. The thickness for this, by the way, as, as I said, is 27mm, but bear in mind that if you did put fans on either side, that would actually increase it to 78mm, which is relatively thick and may not fit in all cases. So you may want to take a look at the 120XL also while you're there. Now, I installed this in our Core Master Net to, uh, uh, Cosmos SE sorry, and threw the fans up at the top. I also did attempt to put the fans down on the bottom, but as I said, I didn't have the mounting hardware, unfortunately. Inside the CPU block, which is powered by a 4-pin PWM fan header, there is also a white LED, which actually, for me, gives a really nice accent, and I quite like it. When the radiator is installed on the top, I quite like the look of it, and does clean up the build nicely, to be able to just have those two, cable, uh, two sort of tubes running down, and then have lots of uh, spare room to be able to put big graphics cards, tall RAM, and all that other stuff in as well. We're going to take a look at the uh, benchmark results in just a second, so stick around for that. Now we're going to be taking a look at the benchmark results for the Coolmaster Neptune 240M. We're also going to be comparing it against the Neptune 120XL in some of the tests we did. So, as usual, we used the Intel Pentium G3420 to test this chip out, and at stock, or at idle, sorry, we ended up getting an average of about 35 to 40 degrees Celsius. Now, bearing in mind the room we are testing it in is incredibly warm, so keep that in mind, but also bear in mind that that is a fairly real-world benchmark in the sense that most people won't cool the room down just to be able to game or, you know, do any testing or ed editing, um, you know, so that's a, it's a more real-world approach to, uh, to the benchmarking. Now, in the after load, after 30-odd uh, 30, uh, 30 minutes of Prime95, we ended up actually getting between 40 and 45 degrees Celsius as an average, which in my eyes is pretty fantastic considering the idle temp was 35-40, which basically meant that this chip barely made a dent in the CPU cooler. Now, we did test it with the, uh, the 9590 from AMD, which, as you can expect, was incredibly power-hungry and incredibly uh, just hot it ran incredibly hot but with this cooler you were actually able to use use the CPU properly which is pretty nice it ended up being about 50 degrees on average although we'll include some more uh, detailed information in the written review down below in terms of the actual uh, you know usage of this as I said it's fantastic to be able to really easily install um, the, the CPU cooler itself uh, and in terms of the uh, the benchmarking actually we did also use the FM2 chips the A10 7700K and the A10 7850K um, to benchmark these or while we're benchmarking those chips we sort of inherently got those results as well so I found out that the uh, Neptune 120XL um, the one we checked out here, hopefully, um, was uh, around about uh, 80 degrees uh, with the, both the CPU and GPU uh, uh, sort of on average during load. With the 240M, however, it was actually 75 degrees, which is a nice comparison to be able to say that the Neptune 240M is definitely worth the tad more money to be able to get that little bit more performance, especially if you're running something like an AMD chip, which could run considerably hot, especially under load. Now we're going to be taking a look at the pros and cons of this in just a second, so stick around for that. 
So the pros and cons of this are definitely that it's very stylish in my eyes. It's got an amazingly easy installation and it has some great temps. The only cons I could really think of is that at high RPMs the fans are actually quite loud. Some improvements on functionality could be that this could have some software um, to be able to actually, you know, like uh, change up some of the, the fan settings and fan curves and stuff, which would be quite nice to see in the future, um, which is why it's going to get a fourth functionality. For value for money, it's going to get a four because it isn't the most value for money cooler on the market, but it still is very decent. For performance, it's going to get a five because anything that can keep an um, uh, FX 9590 at 50 degrees. Is, is pretty exceptional and as for style it's going to get a 5 in my eyes. Overall it's going to get a 4 for Tech Team GB score and it's going to get the worth money award because it's definitely worth your money if you're in the market for a 240ml cooler that's going to keep pretty much anything at least playably cool. So that's pretty much it for this video. As usual, please do check out the written review. It's going to be up on the website a little after the launch of this video. So check it out in the description down below or hopefully the annotation covering the, uh, the website in just a second. Now, um, other than that, uh, as I said, check out the written review. We do try really hard to make sure that uh, all the content that uh, we provide is just uh, as good as it can be and also uh, that you guys have the sort of content that you'd like and, uh, you know, the choice to be able to pick whichever one you want. Um, if uh, you do like that, then please do hit the like button. If you didn't, hit the dislike button, but let us know what you did or didn't like in the comments down below. If you haven't done already, please hit the subscribe button, it helps us out a hell of a lot, and uh, just shows the people like Cooler Master that we're not just some sort of joke, we are a decent organisation that should definitely do more videos. Other than that, as I said, check out the website, uh, like, subscribe, share. Um, definitely please do hit us up on Facebook or Twitter, both uh, at TechTeamGB and TechTeamGB on Facebook. Um, and uh, yeah, just send us a message, um, you know, leave a post, tweet at us, um, you know, follow, favourite, like, all that good stuff. And uh, yeah, we'll see you all in the next video. Thanks for watching. So thanks for watching this Tech Team GB video. You've probably seen enough of me already, so I'm gonna go away. Right after I say, if you haven't already like or dislike, just let us know why in the comments down below as well. Um, check out some of our other videos, hopefully there'll be some somewhere around me. And then also, um, feel free to subscribe as well, that really helps us out. Um, and yeah, obviously it shows companies that you love us. So if you do love us, check us out on Facebook or Twitter, hopefully there will also be some stuff around here maybe. Um, but otherwise that's pretty much it from me, so we'll see you all in the next video.